President Isaac Herzog traveled to the UK to represent Israel at Queen Elizabeth's funeral, which is actually happening today. Israel is continuing its fight against terrorism with more arrests and weapons confiscations across Judea and Samaria. Syria reported that Israel carried out an airstrike at targets near Damascus. And if elections were held today, Netanyahu would be one seat short of forming a majority right-wing government. I'm Josiah and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Welcome back to the show, guys. Excited to be here with you this week, and we got some exciting news happening uh, in the land of Israel today. First, make sure you like this video, also subscribe. Um, it sounds uh, cliche, and I know everybody says it, but actually subscribing and liking the video actually helps us get this show out to more people. We want as many people as possible to be able to know the truth about Israel. There's a lot of people that want to know, they just don't know where to get their accurate information and their accurate news. Uh, so if you would consider subscribing, we would really appreciate it. It really helps out the show and gets it out to more people. Also, click that notifications bell, turn on all notifications so you never miss an, miss an episode of The Israel Guys. We're coming to you three days a week now. Also, this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Guys, the president of Israel, Isaac Herzog, traveled to, Isra uh, traveled to the UK excuse me, uh, to represent Israel at Queen Elizabeth's funeral. Isaac Herzog is the president of Israel, which is the uh, head of the state, basically, of the state of Israel. And uh, he was scheduled to fly to London yesterday, Sunday, as Israel's rep representative at the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. He is uh, supposed to be accompanied by his wife, Michal. Uh, President Herzog will express his condolences to King Charles III on his own behalf and on behalf of the people of Israel. Uh, actually, Herzog previously met with uh, the king at Highgrove house in London. This is when he was actually the Prince of Wales uh, last year in November. So they have already had uh, a meeting when he was the Prince of Wales, not as the King of England now, but uh, from the president's office during his stay in London, uh, he is supposed to attend the official reception that the King will host for the heads of state in the royal family who will be in London to attend the funeral. So he's supposed to attend the official uh, reception and then the funeral. Uh, most Recently, actually, uh, but it's actually interesting because uh, Prince Charles, or now the king, but formerly Prince Charles, had made come to Israel to attend two funerals, the funerals of two former prime ministers, uh, former prime minister Yitzhak Rabin and also Shimon Peres. Uh, he came two different times to attend those funerals. This is when he was the prince as well. Uh, but most recently, actually, uh, King Charles was in Israel in January of 2020 for an official visit when he came to participate in the Fifth World Holocaust Forum, uh, which actually coincided with the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. Uh, so that was the last time uh, King Charles was in Israel. Um, and now the president of Israel, Isaac Herzog, will be traveling to represent the state of Israel. And this is really what the role of the president of Israel. Um, the prime minister is the, basically the head of, of the government and, and head of, he's from a specific political party. The president of Israel is not supposed to be affiliated with any uh, specific party leaning right or left, but basically he's like the, the guy that brings the state of Israel together. He's the representative um, of the state and he goes around to the uh, surrounding nations and, and all across the world representing who the, the state of Israel is, who the nation of Israel is, what they stand for, uh, their values, and often uh, can be uh, brokering peace or just creating good relations with nations around the world as the official representative of the state of Israel. So that's going to be uh, good going to the Queen's funeral in the UK. Now, Israel's uh, war on terrorism and I uh, say war, but it's not really war. Basically, their fight against to stop uh, these terrorist attacks that have been happening over the last several months and a uh, little bit of an increase in the last couple of weeks. We've seen some terrorist attacks, uh, several of them in the last several of weeks. But the IDF, the Sheen, the Sheen Bet, 
uh, which is Israel's internal security agency, and the border police operated all throughout the West Bank, and they arrested a few suspected terrorists and confiscated a lot of weapons. The security forces operated in the town uh, near Nablus. They confiscated a number of weapons, including one that they believe was used to fire on Israeli vehicles nor near the town of Hawara on September 8th, and that's just uh, over the hill. I can see it from where I'm sitting right now. But uh, last week, the Palestinians shot at Israeli cars near Hawar, and uh, they were arrested by the Israeli security and uh, transferred for questioning. So that, that was good. They were immediately stopped. Thankfully, nobody was injured in this. The Israeli forces also operated in the areas of Tekoa and Bat Omer, Bait Omer which is uh, down south. Uh, as well as uh, near Ramallah as well. They arrested two more suspects there, suspected of terrorism or about to carry out an attack or suspected of a previous attack, uh, things like that. Uh, but they also arrested more suspects in towns near Janine and Tulkarim. All across Sudan and Samaria, they're doing a very, the intelligence ministers are very good. Uh, they're figuring out who was connected to terrorism and who may be about to carry out a terrorist attack. Um, but they're doing a very, a thorough job of stopping terrorism before it happens. And uh, we continue to pray for the safety of the Israel security forces and thank God that they are uh, very professional and they, they do a good job of, of stopping uh, as much terrorism as possible before these guys come and, 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 and harm and kill innocent uh, Israeli civilians in Israel. Uh, just actually on Thursday, there was a terrorist that infil infiltrated Mount Hebron and shot into a yeshiva, actually, I believe he shot through the window, but an 18-year-old uh, yeshiva student was wounded after the terrorist infiltrated the Jewish community of Southern uh, Mount Hebron, and uh, apparently he infiltrated the settlement, went up to the yeshiva and shot through the window and then escaped. The IDF uh, forces and members of the settlement's uh, emergency response uh, team are, were looking, uh, searching for him. I'm not sure if the IDF have found him yet. This was Thursday. Uh, they probably uh, know exactly where he is if they haven't already arrested him. But uh, the Home Front Command at the time called on the residents of Hebron to shut themselves inside their houses and lock the doors, which is standard procedure anytime there is a suspected infiltration attack in any of the Jewish communities. The Magen David Dome, which is the ambulance service, a main ambulance service here in Israel, uh, provided medical treatment to the wounded and evacuated him to the hospital in Beersheba. Uh, he was actually fully conscious. The paramedic who uh, worked on him, Elad Pass, said that, quote, the victim, about 18 years old, was fully conscious with bullet wounds to his upper body. He was t talking and communicating with us. We took him to the MICU while treating him and conveyed him to the hospital in moderate but a stable condition. So thank God it seems like he was only uh, lightly injured is in a moderate condition. It could have been a lot worse. Could have a lot more people been uh, injured seriously or even killed in this incident. Uh, so we're thankful you can continue to pray for his speedy, speedy recovery. There'd be no complications um, with recovering from this wound. Guys, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. A VPN stands for a virtual private network and it basically makes all your internet traffic travel through an encrypted tunnel and it protects you from spying from public Wi-Fi dangers and hides your IP address and all your online activity. You can even set your device to use a virtual location. I know it sounds complicated, but a VPN is actually very simple. It basically protects you wherever you are on the internet. And in today's world, you need to think about uh, hackers and scammers who are trying to steal your personal information like your passwords and your bank account uh, information. All that basically you need a digital security system uh, for, for your digital uh, internet and that's where a VPN comes in. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge deal. You can get a three-year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee using our link in the description below, so make sure and check that out. If you're like me and send, spend a significant amount of time on the internet, or if you're even on the internet at all, you need to be protected and you need a security system uh, for your computer or your phone. It's basically the digital version of having a security system at your house. I am on the internet all the time and I always have a VPN on and it's not super complicated. Even if you're not very techy, you have to, you, all you have to do is download the app and within one click of the button, about two to three seconds, I'm protected and my phone is completely, uh, all the internet traffic is traveling through this VPN and I'm now protected from those hackers who are trying to steal my personal information. Again, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount um, you can get a three-year subscription with for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee using our link in the description below, or you could click up here 
Guys, go check out Atlas VPN. I recommend it. Start getting protected uh, when you're using the internet today. It's very, very important to protect our digital data. So go and check that out. Link is in the description below. Uh, the Syrian media reported on Friday night that Israel carried out an airstrike in the vicinity of Damascus. According to the Syrian media reports, the country's air defense systems responded to an Israeli airstrike. Um, so, so far that I've seen, Israel has not uh, made a statement on this or taken responsibility. Uh, it's very unlikely that they will, even if they were responsible for it. Uh, but, um, or it's possible that they, that they will, but the last several attacks we've seen on Syria, there hasn't necessarily been a lot. I talked about it because there's a lot of unrest in Syria and there's a lot of terrorist factions that are working inside of Syria and in Lebanon, actually. Uh, so the, a lot of times Israel just takes a quick, very targeted, takes out certain uh, weapons facilities or uh, missile storage places or specific uh, terrorist factions that are operating inside of these places. Uh, but Israel hasn't necessarily taken responsibility for this attack. There was, uh, a, a, uh, initially, there was no reported damage or uh, injuries from the airstrike, but uh, later the, the Syrian media claimed that five soldiers were killed in the alleged Israeli attack. On Saturday, uh, so two days ago, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights confirmed the reported deaths, adding that two Iranian-backed fighters were also killed. Uh, so this could be a good, good indicator of who was responsible and the reason for the attack. Iranian-backed fighters inside of Syria, not a good story there. But uh, earlier this month, there were also several airstrikes. There's one on the Aleppo International Airport. Syria uh, said it was carried out by Israel. The satellite footage showed a lot of damage there to the airport. But specific, the landing strip there, specific uh, targets, not just random places. Uh, but also earlier in the month of June, there was another uh, airstrike on the Damascus airport. So there's been a few of these in the past uh, several months. And it uh, seems, and we, what we know from past, that Israel does keep a very close tab on what's happening in the Arab countries surrounding Israel. And uh, a lot of times uh, their intelligence is absolutely phenomenal, but they're able to tell what's happening, where there's weapons build up, and a lot of these terrorist factions, uh, a lot of them backed by uh, Iran and Russia that are being built up in these areas, and they're able to preemptively strike these specific targets um, before these guys can actually start attacking Israel. So Israel, again, is doing a lot uh, to protect its citizens and being actually proactive and not waiting uh, for them to be attacked and, and receive a barrage of missiles from these places that are building up weapons in Syria and in Lebanon. The, um, we have an official update from the Israeli government. I know there's been a lot of speculation. We've been talking about different parties that are, are splitting and joining together, forming alliances, getting all their party lists together for the elections coming up in November. But November, I mean, excuse me, Thursday was the official deadlines for all the parties to hand in their list. Uh, so basically it's sealed now and then each party that submitted a list are eligible to receive ballots in the November 1st election. And uh, so there's just a few changes from what I talked about last week with Ayala Shaked. She did indeed uh, join forces with the Jewish Home Party. So they will be running together with her at the head. I believe their name is going to be, they're going to call the party the Jewish Home. It's a joint between Yamina, the remnants of Yamina, and Jewish Home, uh, which is actually Jewish Home is what Ayala Shaked originally split off from with Naftali Bennett in 2019, or 2018 maybe, uh, and they where they formed the, eventually formed the Amina Party. They started with new, the New Right, and then they eventually formed the Amina Party. So they're back uh, together with Ayel Chiquet at the head, uh, but right now they're not even uh, on the list to cross the threshold and receive seats in the government. We'll see, a lot of things could change before that. Also a very interesting and important Note here is that the Arab parties, there's two major Arab parties in the Knesset. Uh, there's the United Arab List, which is in the coalition that's headed by Mansour Abbas, which is made up of several Arab parties. And then there's the Arab Joint List, which was in the opposition and is, was made up of three Arab parties, uh, the Balad Party, also the Hadesh Party, and the Ta'al Party, three Arab parties that, that form the Arab Joint List. But just this last week, the Balad Party declared that they're splitting off from the joint uh, running party. And uh, so now the Arab Joint List is just two parties, and right now they're only slated in the polls to receive four seats. Uh, and speaking of polls, the Channel 12 and Channel 13 News here in Israel actually did a poll, released it Friday. And uh, very interesting, Netanyahu, 
with a forming a right wing government with the right wing parties would receive uh, if elections were held today. This is what the polls are showing. He would receive a 60 seat uh, right wing could form a right wing government, which you need a 61 seat majority to do that. So he's one seat shy of forming a majority right wing coalition government. And but the anti Netanyahu people or the left wing parties and then those who are more center, uh, but but anti Netanyahu would receive if they all joined together would receive 56 uh, seats. The uh, Likud party, according to Channel 12 poll, would receive 33 seats. Yeshatid, which is Yair Lapid's party, the current prime minister of Israel, would receive 23. So there's a difference of 10 seats there. Likud is definitely uh, very far ahead. Then, very interesting, the National Unity Party, which is Benny Gantz, the Blue and White Party, and Gidon Sar's New Hope Party, which the New Hope Party was a right wing. Uh, Blue and White was more center. center. Benny Gantz is definitely center left. He does have some center, uh, more right-wing people in his party as well. But their joint list, the National Unity Party, would only receive 12 seats. And the Religious Zionist Party, which is um, Betzalel Smotrich and Itamar ben Gavir, would receive 12 seats as well. Followed by Shah's party, which is an ultra-Orthodox party, would receive eight seats. The UTJ, another Orthodox party, would receive seven seats. And then moving down the list, Israel Beitenu, which is Avigdor Lieberman, receive six seats. The Labor Party, left-wing party, would receive six seats. The Merits Party, left-wing party, would receive five seats. And then the two Arab parties would receive four seats each. So those two were at the bottom of the list. And previously, it's not what we've seen in the polls. They've been uh, closer. One of the Arab parties has always been closer uh, to the top middle, and even several of the elections was close to the top of the list. So it's uh, uh, good to see these parties down on the list because these guys are very anti-Israel. They, they're very anti-Zionist. Um, and then finishing out the Zionist Spirit Party or Jewish Home with Ayel Shaked now at the head uh, wouldn't even cross the threshold at this point. And the Arab Party that split off from the other Arab coalition would not even cross the threshold at this point. Um, so we do uh, have another, what, two months until the election, month and a half, and uh, things could change, but... Uh, it seems like uh, Netanyahu may have a chance of forming a right-wing government if all these right-wing parties do join together. We will see. Again, uh, it would be great for Israel to get a majority right-wing government in, in place to make good decisions for the people of Israel, especially as regards to Judea and Samaria. But uh, only time will tell. We continue to pray for the state of Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we will keep you informed on what is happening with elections as we move forward to November 1st. Guys, make sure and check out Atlas VPN. I encourage you to go and download it. You got a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not happy, you can get your money back within 30 days. And uh, start getting protected when you are on the internet. Protect your digital data today. In the meantime, let us know what you think in the comments below. We love interacting with you there. Tune out the fake news and tune in to what is actually happening in the land of Israel. We'll be back every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.